Shalom, Yasha'Allah. It's Brother Mapathak, right? That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And it's going to be a, um, just a video meditating on um, us taking the kingdom, right? And our Lord and Savior, our King, Yahweh Shai, reigning forever, right? And I want to just dive right into the words of the Lord. And before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, and the name of His only begotten Son, who the world will ignorantly call Jesus Christ. But we know Him as Yahweh Shai, the righteous, right? And um, yeah, I just want to dive right into this thing. So um, it's the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse 4, and it reads, The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Right? So the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Right? Um, the so-called white man doesn't um rule this kingdom because something they did or because of their power or because of um their wisdom or their might. It's it's ultimately um because of the Lord. You understand? The Lord placed us in their hands because of our forefathers' wickedness, right? Um, let's get that. Um, let's get that. At, um, let's see what I want. I can go to a couple precepts. Let's get this in Judges, right? So this is the book of um, Judges, chapter two and verse fourteen, and it reads: "And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and He delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them." So this is how the Lord get down, right? This is the punishment of the Lord. Right. Because we um, forsook the Lord. So he delivered us into the hands of spoilers. And he's been doing this since the beginning of the days. You understand? And it says, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. And we were sold into the hands of our enemies round about. Right. As bond men and bond women. Right. Slave men and slave women, which was prophesied in Deuteronomy 2868. Right. And, that, and it came to pass here in America. And it says, so that they could not longer, Salakia, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies, right? So that's how the Lord get down. It's not because the so-called white men are stronger than us, right? Because they outsmarted us or anything like that. It was all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? That's the reason we went into slavery. And that's the reason why we're still in captivity today. You understand? Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 17. And it reads, this is Daniel to the 4 and verse 17, and it reads, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. So the Most High God ruleth in the kingdom of men, right? And giveth it to whomsoever he will and set up, up over it the basis of men. And that's what's going on today. The Lord set up over the earth the basis of men, which is the so-called white man. You understand? So let's go back to Sirach. So just a quick um, foundation, right? And understanding that um, the Most High God sets in Salaki, the Most High God have the power of the earth and he sets over it whosoever he will, right? So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse four, and it reads, the power of the Lord is in Salaki. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And that's really what I want to meditate on and kind of touch on, right? It says in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable, right? And on a deeper, on a deeper, deeper level, this is really Sirach prophesying, right? About the, um, about Yahweh Shai, man, right? Because that's who, that's who the Lord is going to set over this, um, this earth is Yahweh Shai. And he's going to be the king of all of us. You understand? So it says in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable, man, right? And Yahweh Shai is prophet, prophesied, um, prophesied to be our everlasting king. Right, and we're gonna get into that, but I just want to get um read on a little bit more in Sirac 10. Um, so I'm gonna jump to verse 8, and it reads, Um, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's what Esau is about. Esau is about unrighteous dealings, Esau is about injuries, right? That's how they got this land in America, through unrighteous dealings, through injuries, right? And riches gotten by deceit. That's literally what America is known for. Right. So in the spirit, you can perceive what this is talking about. Right. And, and this has been happening throughout history, actually. Right. That's why um, the, the, the kingdom is constantly translated to another to another people. Right. And um, it says the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And I want to jump down again as well. And verse 14, it says, the Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. And Israel, right, chiefly the elect, those that's going to see salvation, right, they're going to be um, set up in, in the stead of the proud, 
right? The proud um, so-called white man is going to be cast down and the meek are going to be set up in their stead. Let me get a quick precept. We're going to come back here. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Just to show you how proud the wicked so-called white man is. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. And it reads, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? And this is not talking about how the Christian church would break this down. Um, the damn red devil with a pitchfork in his hand was thrown out of damn heaven. This is not what this account is going into. Because when you read it in this context, it's talking about Babylon, right? And, it's, and it was a, it's a future prophecy, right? And um, it's talking about the so-called white man. That's who Lucifer is in, in this um, context. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations, right? Because the so-called white men, they um, weaken the other nations with their wine. You understand? Let me get that real fast. I don't want to get too deep into prophecy, but um, I just want to make this clear. And then when you read the whole Isaiah 14 in this context, it, it's talking about Babylon, right? But I want to bring this out. Um, Jeremiah 51 and 7, to show how Babylon weakened the other nations. It says, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken them for wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. And through the wine of Babylon, that's how these other nations were weakened. Right. So let's go back to Isaiah 14. So this is literally talking about Babylon. Right. When you read Isaiah 14 in this context. Um, so let's go to um, 13. It says, for thou hast said in thine heart. I will ascend into heaven. And this is what the so-called white men said. They said, I will ascend into heaven, right? I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high, right? And they, they, they're proud. The so-called white man is proud, right? They got cameras everywhere, right? They dictate um, pretty much everything that's going on in the world. You understand? They're literally um, the rulers of this kingdom, right? And they feel like they're gods on this earth. So it says, I will exalt, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will also... So like it, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make my I will be like the most high. This is how the so this is the thoughts of the so-called white man. Right? They say I will be like the most high, man. Right? And um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring that out to show the pride of the so-called white man. So let's go back to Syrac um 10. Um the Sirach 10 and verse 14. I'm going to read 14 again. It says, The Lord have cast down the throes of proud proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. And we represent the meek, right? That's what the Lord, Yahweh Shai, told us out of his own mouth in Matthew 5 and verse 5 that the meek shall inherit the earth, man, right? Because that's who the, um, the Lord is going to set up in the stead of the, um, instead of the so called white man, right? They're going to be cast down and then the meek is going to be set up in their stead. And the meek represents Yahweh Shai and the elect. Right, Salakia. And it says, and just to get another preset, right? The second Ezra 6 and verse, um, I'm going to get straight to the point. Verse 9, it says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Meaning, um, Esau's kingdom is the end of the world, right? And right after Esau's kingdom um, is destroyed, um, Jacob is going to be set up in their stead. Israel, you understand? That's plain. So when you read um, Sirach in the spirit, you can see a lot of things that's going on in here, right? So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 10, and I'm going um, to read verse 14 now. So like I read, I want verse 15. It says, the Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. And that's what's going to happen to these heathen in these last days. They're going to be burnt in um, nuclear fire, right? And um, destroyed by Yahweh Shai and the angels. It says, he... He took some of them away and destroyed them and have made their memorial to cease from the earth, meaning you're, they're not going to be in remembrance anymore. Right. So it's actually deep when you're reading Syrac in the spirit because you actually see he, he's um, prophesying in the spirit. Right. Even though on a deeper level is because the things that happened in the past. Right. They happen all over again. Right. The Lord requires that which pass. Right. So. I'm going to read this again. It says he took some of them away and destroyed them and have made their memorial to cease from the earth. Right. So let's get a precept on that. Right. It says he made their memorial to cease from the earth. Right. I'm going to get Job 18 and I'm going to read verse five and I'm going to jump down. This is Job 18 and five. It says, yeah, the light of the wicked shall be put out and the spark of his fire shall not shine. Right. And the wicked, we know that's talking about the so-called white man. Right. 
And the whole thing is good, but I want to get straight to the point. Um, I'm going to jump to verse 15. It says, And it shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. And we know that um, Babylon is going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone. And it says, His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. Talking about his posterity. Right? These... um. Because the roots, uh, so like the roots represent their foundation, and the branch represents the offspring. It's all going to be cut off, right? And it says, verse seventeen, his remembrance. So just like we just read in Sirach ten about the memorial being no more, um, Job prophesied about the same thing. Verse seventeen, it says, his remembrance shall perish from the earth, right? And he shall have no name in the street. So the so-called white man's remembrance is going to perish from the earth. They're going to be, um, they're going to be um, disappear from off the face of the earth. Right? Let's get Psalms 109 and verse 13. This is the book of Psalms, the 109 and verse 13, and it reads, Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. It's plain. Their name is literally going to be blotted out the earth. In the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to be thinking about Esau. Right? At least after a while, right? After a thousand years has passed, we're not going to be thinking about Esau. Right. And it says, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Right. Verse 15, let them be before the Lord continually that he may be that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. And their memory is going to be cut off from the earth. Saying we read about the same thing throughout different precepts. It says, because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy men. And this is what they do still uh, till today. They persecute the poor and needy men, Salaki, the poor and needy men. And we represent that poor and needy man, right? We're constantly persecuted in this captivity, right? In this world, in a, in a so-called white man's kingdom, right? It says that he may, that he might even slay the broken in heart. And we're constantly being slain in the streets by the so-called white man, right? By the damn police that that's supposed to so-called protect and serve, right? But they're slaying the Israelites in the, in the streets, man, day by day. You understand? And we're getting no justice for it. But when Yahweh and the angels return, we're going to be, um, we're going to get our justice that we've been longing for. You understand? Let's get one more dealing with, um, their memory being blotted out, right? And them being destroyed from off the face of the earth. This is Job 20 and verse four. And it reads, knowest now that this, Salaki, knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short. And the joy of the hypocrite before a moment. So the triumphing of the wicked is short, man. Right? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, like we read in Isaiah 14, they're proud. They feel like they're going to be able to exalt themselves above the most high God and be like the most high. That's why it says, though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach up into the clouds, right? Because he's prideful. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Right? He's going to perish forever like his own dung. Those which seen the so-called white man are going to say, where is he? Right? And then the, the, the meek is going to be set up in their stead. Right? How is shy and the elect? Um, our kingdom is going to be um, set up. Right? It's a beautiful, beautiful prophecy. The prophecies are beautiful, man. We got to get into the prophecies in these last days. Right? The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Yahweh Shai, man. We got to be able to go into these prophecies and break them down. Right? And give the understanding thereof. Because they're beautiful. Right. And they, hey, they, they, they're beautiful, man. I'm gonna leave it at that. Right. And it says, verse eight, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yeah. He shall be chased away as the vision of the night. The eye which shall see him shall say, see him no more. So like, yeah, the eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place anymore behold him. Right. So he's going to kind of disappear from off the face of the earth. He's going to go extinct. You understand? So I'm going to go back to the book of Syrac. That's a that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um thing. Let's go to Syrac, and let's go to chapter 16 now. Right? So you gotta read, you gotta read all these um different books in the spirit. Right? Don't just read books like Proverbs, Syrac, and Psalms, and just even on the on the um on the main fold level, um there, I mean on the main fold level, it's talking about a certain thing, but when you read it in the spirit. Right, hey, you can see, you can perceive and understand through the spirit that they're talking about um prophecies and dark sayings. You understand? So this is the book of Syrac, chapter 16 and verse 4, and it reads, 
for by one that have understanding. So for by one that have understanding, shall the city be replenished. But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. Right. And that's what I want to touch on. Verse four. For by one that have understanding, so the city be replenished. So we represent the city of Jerusalem, right? And for by one that have understanding, and that one being Yahweh Shai, we were replenished, right? Through the teachings of Yahweh Shai, and ultimately through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. So for by one that have understanding, so the city be replenished, right? So we live and we're replenished through Yahweh Shai, man, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. So these are some things I was meditating on as I read through Syrac, right? And I just wanted to bring it out, right? So this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20, and it reads, But now is Yahweh Shai risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept, right? For since by man came death, so by man came death, by Adam came death, by Adam came sin, right? Ultimately through, um, by Eve, I should say, right? But um, Adam sinned as well. Right. So and by Adam came death. Right. That's the Lord. So it says for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. So um, we died because of Adam and we were resurrected and given life and replenished like we read about in Syrac 16 by Yahweh Shai. Right. Let's read on. Verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Yahweh Shai shall all be made alive. So like we read about in Syrac 16. Right. For by one shall the whole city be replenished. Right. In Jerusalem, we're that city. And, and Yahweh Shai is that one that we were replenished by. You understand? So by one with understanding, will the city be replenished, man? Right. So let me read this again. Verse 22. It says, for as in Adam all die, even so in Yahweh Shai shall all be made alive. Right. I'm going to read verse 23. But every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai, the first fruit. So Yahweh Shai, the first spirit created. Afterward, they that are Yahweh Shai that has come in. And afterward, they that believed in Yahweh Shai, they elect, right? Those that stood stiffly um, for the name of the Lord, the Most High, and His Son, Yahweh Shai, right? That's that city of Jerusalem that's going to be replenished. Um, Let's go to Romans 3, right? So we were all ungodly children. Let me read that real fast in Syrac. I want to read, I'm going to start from 16 and verse 1. It says, Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord be with them. Mm -hmm. Trust not thou in their life, neither respect their multitude. For one that is just is better than a thousand, and better is it to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. Mm -hmm. Right? So we represent that um that unprofitable um, multitude of children. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we all feel short of the glory of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Right? But how will we replenish? Through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Let me read verse 4. For by one that have understanding shall the city be replenished. Right. But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate and the wicked going to be destroyed. Right. But I really want to deal with the, the, the beginning of that verse for by one that have understanding shall the city be replenished. So I had to come back to it just to um, reiterate that point. You understand that we were ungodly children, but we were replenished. The city was replenished through that one that have understanding, which is Yahweh Shai. So you, so, so you can just see how these things come together. So let's go back to Romans. Now I want to bring it out. This is Romans 3 and 23. It says, For all have sinned, right? And come short of the glory of the Most High God. So we were all those ungodly children that came short of the glory of the Most High. Right? Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. So we were redeemed through Yahweh Shai's blood. Right? We were, re we were replenished by Yahweh Shai's sacrifice through His blood. Whom the Most High God have set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of the Most High. That's plain. Right. So that's how we um, we're replenished as a city. Right. As a nation. It's the, that's just the book of um, St. John chapter 11 and verse 25. And it reads. Yahweh Shai said unto her, I am the resurrection. Right. Um, yeah, I'll start from here. I, I, I'll get 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So this is the, um, Martha talking about her brother Lazarus, right? And it says, Yahweh Shai said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. So though we were all dead, we were all those unprofitable, ungodly children, but we were replenished and brought back alive through Yahweh Shai. 
right? And it says, verse 26, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And we have to believe these things, right? We have to believe that, right? That we are never, we're never going to die as long as we believe in Yahweh Shai. You understand? Right? As long as we strive to um, um, walk like Yahweh Shai, right? And I just had a precept in my mind, Salakia, um... It kind of left me. It's been happening all day, man. Right? But that just mean the Lord didn't want it to come out, right? Lord willing, they come back to me, right? So this is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9. It reads, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people. But are now the people of the Most High God, which have obtained mercy, Salaki, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Right? So through Yahweh's side, now we've obtained mercy. You understand? We were not a people, but we were replenished and brought back into the covenant through um, the sacrifice of Yahweh's side, man. Right? Which is a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. Right? We got to, um, hey, we should always be thanking Yahweh's side for the sacrifice of Yahweh. I mean, Salaki, thanking the Most High God for the sacrifice of his son, Yahweh's side, man. That's something that should be constantly in your, in your prayers. Thanking the Most High God for His grace and His mercy. You understand? For the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right? So, hey, we're going to be replenished through Yahweh Shai. Right? I want to go back to Sirach and bring out something real fast. Let's go to um back to 10. And um, Just because we're dealing with the city, right? I'm going to start from the top, right? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 1. And it reads, A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, right? So as the judge, the ruler of the people, so are the, those that's under him and learning from him are going to be, you understand? And what manner of man, Salaki, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You understand the ruler of our city, the ruler of Jerusalem is going to be Yahweh Shai. So we're going to be like Yahweh Shai in that day, Lord willing, we're part of that number. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but the prudence of them which are in authority, the city, um, the city shall be inhabited, right? It says, right, and I just wanted to touch on that, right? Because so, hey, we went for um, Yahweh Shai to get his kingdom, right? We went for Yahweh Shai to get his kingdom. And I'm going to read this again as well, verse 4. Right, because we touched on this at the beginning, but I didn't really go into it, but now I'm going to go into it. It says, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. So it all goes back to Yahweh Shah. Right, in due time, um, the Lord is going to set over over the earth um, one that is profitable. And that one that is profitable, um, Salakia, one that is profitable is Yahweh Shah. Right? Real fast, let me get this preset. Got to type it in real fast, I don't remember it. Um... So Philippians 2 and 10, let's go into it. And that's what we're longing for, man. We're longing for Yahweh Shai to get his kingdom. So this Philippians 2 and verse 10, and it reads that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And we're waiting for that day for everything to bow down to Yahweh Shai, man. Right? Let me um go up a little bit. Does this, this whole Philippians 2 is good, right? Um, I'm gonna start from eight, right? And it's speaking about Yahweh Shai. It says, "Being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." Right? Wherefore the Most High God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So Yahweh Shai is highly exalted, right? Even as we speak right now, Yahweh Shai is living and he's exalted above everything, right? He just waiting to come back down and destroy these nations and get his kingdom, right? Verse 10, it says that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So everybody is going to bow down to Yahweh Shai, right? And it says, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of the Most High God, the Father. Right? So everybody is going to bow to Yahweh Shai. You got a lot of brothers saying, I, I had this brother on, on damn Facebook. I, I kind of had to delete the brother. The brother kind of was making stats saying these, these damn shepherds are fools. They're bowing down to a baby. Because when you read about Yahweh Shai being born, you had the two shepherds that um that worship him when he was um, fresh out of the womb. Right? He said they're bowing down to a baby. Right? But he's a damn fool because every, every knee is going to bow to Yahweh Shai. Right? That's plain. 
Everybody's going to get down and worship Yahweh Shai, man. That's that's at the Lord. Right? So um, let's go to Luke chapter 1. And verse 31. So that's what we're longing for. We're longing for our Lord and Savior to return and to rule over the earth, man. Right? So this is Luke 131 and... and so like you, Luke 1 and verse 31 and it reads, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai, man. Right? So this is the uh, angel Gabriel sp uh, speaking to Mary. Verse 32 and it says, And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Right? So Yahweh Shai is going to be given the throne. It's prophesied throughout the scriptures. And it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So he's going to have an everlasting kingdom, right? He's going to have an everlasting kingdom. There's going to be no end of the Lord's kingdom, right? You got brothers saying Yahweh Shai's kingdom is a Satan going to come back after a thousand years and try to take Yahweh Shai's kingdom from him, man, right? But that's not, that's not, um, that's at the Lord, man, right? Go to Second Peter chapter one and verse 10. We're going to read the classic and then we're going to get the next verse, which a lot of brothers don't read. Um, so this is the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10 And it reads Wherefore the rather Brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure For if you do these things you shall never fail So we have to give diligence to make our calling and election sure Because we want to see, we want to get the kingdom Verse 11 Right For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly Unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Right and that's what we're working for That's why we need to be diligent Right to get the entrance to that everlasting kingdom Right the everlasting kingdom of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. That's plain. Right? Yahweh Shai is going to have an everlasting dominion, an everlasting kingdom. Right? I want to bring this out of Revelation 11. It's a book of Revelation, the 11, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. It reads, And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his of Hamashiach. And he shall reign forever and ever, man. Right? So Yahweh Shai is going to reign forever and ever. And when that seventh angel sound, that's going into utter destruction of this earth, man. When Yahweh Shai and the angels kind of getting down, man. Right? Taking down these different nations and, sub and subduing them. Right? So that's what we're waiting for, man. We long for this day. Right? We pray to be worthy to even stand before Yahweh Shai when this day comes. Right? And I'm going to get um a few more. Let's go to Daniel 7. And verse 13, and it reads, And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. So the Son of Man is going into Yahweh Shai, obviously, and the Ancient of Days is dealing with the Most High God, right? Because you can't number his days, right? And that's pursuing uh, Job chapter 36 and verse 26, right? And it says, And they brought um, him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages, Salaki, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And so Yahweh Shai's kingdom is never going to pass away. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is never going to be destroyed, man. So this is what we need to be meditating on, right? Our mind need to be on the kingdom of heaven. That's where our heart need to always be. You understand? Right? And um, Lord willing, this was edifying. Lord willing, brothers and sisters got the understanding. So when we read inside right, man, you got to read that thing in the spirit, man. Right? It's really a lot going on in these different um books. You might just read them on the main fold level and think, hey, it's just it's just the wisdom. It's just wisdom of Solomon or it's just Syrac. It's just Proverbs. It's just Psalms. Right? It's just prayers or whatever you, you may think. But on a deeper level, hey, it's a lot going on in the spirit. You understand? So a good prayer is to ask the Lord to open your eyes to the wondrous things in his law, the wondrous things in his word, man. Right, and you can get um, better understanding thereof. So continue to pray, continue to fast, continue to read, continue to study, continue to love your brothers, love your sisters. You understand, and just do all things in edification of the elect and edification of the body, right? Which is the church, right? Right. So with that, I want to say shalom, yasha Allah. I want to give all praise, and honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Once again, another mighty shalom, and um, shalom.